Have you heard that Jesus Christ was really an ancient Egyptian god named Thoth incarnated, and who was also an Anunnaki king of Atlantis who wielded advanced technology and cosmic wisdom? This immortal being achieved his enduring existence by utilizing rejuvenation chambers where he could transfer his consciousness into human avatars of his choosing. Over time, he acquired the cosmic power to incarnate at will, eventually choosing to become a newborn human who would be recognized as Jesus Christ the Messiah 2,000 years ago. In Compendium of the Emerald Tablets, authored by Billy Carson, Mr. Carson presents multiple pieces of evidence illustrating the notion that the Egyptian deity Thoth was not only an actual person that existed, but an ancient extraterrestrial that possessed advanced technology capable of transferring his consciousness into a specially crafted human avatar over 36,000 years ago. This extends to the possibility that Jesus of Nazareth in biblical scriptures was actually one of the many incarnations of Thoth who was the god of wisdom to the Egyptians. The early leaders of the church taught that reincarnation and incarnation are blasphemous beliefs. However, Yeshua or Jesus mentioned the concept of reincarnation on several occasions. An in-depth analysis of the Emerald Tablets reveals numerous moments within biblical narratives where the teachings and pronouncements of Jesus align perfectly with those attributed Thoth the Atlantean priest king, whose presence in the Emerald Tablets predates any biblical scriptures by millennia. Embarking on an exploration through a maze of artifacts and ancient legends integrated into human history, the discussions move into the realms of ancient extraterrestrials and their technologies. Among these, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, also known as the Books of Thoth, distinguish themselves through their aura of mystery and their links to Egyptian pharaohs, Greek leaders, esteemed philosophers, and the luminaries of science. This artifact, the Emerald Tablets, is celebrated as a vault of arcane wisdom dating back 36,000 years on Earth, intertwining with the mysteries of the cosmos, sophisticated technologies, mystical energies, and the enigmatic city of Atlantis, all encapsulated within a collection of over 30,000 tablets that exhibit a mystical, evanescent green glow. Some of the tablets are currently housed in a museum in England, while most of the remaining are concealed within the archives of the Vatican underground. Mr. Conway, in Crystal Enchantment, states that the African Queen of Sheba was knowledgeable about the numerous books or tablets of Thoth. She was the one who introduced King Solomon to the vast gold mines of Africa. According to Mantheo, an Egyptian priest from the third century BC the Emerald Tablets were extremely sacred and powerful to humanity. Mantheo claims that Thoth authored 36,525 books. The wisdom contained within these tablets was not accessible to the average person and has been concealed by elites and priests across every generation. Utilizing any of the tablets without Thoth's explicit consent was considered perilous. On a specific occasion, one such tablet, guarded by serpents, was encased in a golden box and concealed at the bottom of the Nile River. Prince Nefercaptor managed to retrieve it. However, Thoth's retribution was swift and relentless, driving the prince to suicide and eradicating his family lineage. The emerald tablets remained hidden within Nefercaptor's tomb for centuries until they were rediscovered by the priest Mantheo in the 11th century. Mantheo, whose interests lay in magic, alchemy, and ancient manuscripts of wisdom unearthed the tablets under mysterious circumstances, with stories suggesting the book revealed itself to him. In 332 BCE, Alexander the Great embarked on a quest for the elusive emerald tablets, aiming to unlock the mysteries of godhood. His journey took him to Siwa, where he found the tablet within a temple. Subsequently, he safeguarded the scrolls in the Library of Alexandria, which was a focal point of knowledge. During the Greco-Roman era, Thoth was assimilated into the figure of Hermes, ensuring the survival of Thoth's legend in various guises. This period saw the rise of Hermes Trismegistus, a fusion of deity and prophet, whose influence spread throughout the Roman Empire, notably through the Hermetica, a collection of texts linked to Hermes. 
In the midst of these changes, the mystery of the Emerald Tablets remained. Progressing to the Middle Ages, alchemy gained prominence in Europe, with the Emerald Tablets at its core, captivating figures like Copernicus, Kepler, Paracelsus, and Boyle. The tablets' obscure passages inspired the pursuit of the Philosopher's Stone, emblematic of spiritual transformation and gaining Christ consciousness. Isaac Newton, celebrated for his scientific contributions, also delved into alchemy, drawing significant inspiration from the Emerald Tablet. His work in science was deeply intertwined with the philosophical concepts derived from the tablet. Newton's engagement with alchemy unveiled a multifaceted individual, not solely a scientific pioneer, but also a seeker of ancient knowledge. His efforts to translate the Emerald Tablet opened a portal to the mysteries of the cosmos, merging scientific inquiry with esoteric exploration. As time progressed, the influence of the Emerald Tablet persisted into the 20th century, with Maurice Doreal, motivated by astral visions, asserting the existence of 10 hidden Emerald Tablets guarded by the Great White Brotherhood. Doriel's ventures led him to India and Egypt, where he encountered the tablets and was permitted to translate them. His translations, compiled as the Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, presented a cosmic narrative linking Thoth to Atlantis. Although Doriel's claims were met with skepticism, they underscore the persistent fascination with the Emerald Tablets. The question of the tale's veracity notwithstanding, its impact on human thought continues unabated. The original Emerald Tablet remains a transformative emblem, leaving an indelible imprint on the intellectual journey of scholars through the ages. Should the tablet's Doriel claim to translate ever surface, they could dramatically alter our understanding of human history. The legendary Emerald Tablet, having endured through millennia, may still unveil novel insights into our past, the nature of our reality, and the essence of existence itself. The Emerald Tablets are acknowledged as the primary texts introduced into the Egyptian mystery schools, catering to aspirants of heightened consciousness known as Jedi. As per the theories, Clemens, one of the early church fathers of Christianity, cautioned future Christian academics that only the most enlightened individuals should be entrusted with these esoteric teachings. He advocated for their concealment from the general populace, arguing that these documents were celestial in nature and discussed the cosmos's expansion as a manifestation of the divine, presided over by seven supreme beings who rank above all gods, demigods, angels, and humans. Delving into the mysterious persona of Thoth, one is drawn to the fascinating linguistic resemblance among the name Thoth and the terms taught and thought. Historical accounts portray Thoth as the premier intelligencer, charged by his father Enki, as recorded in Sumerian tablets, with initiating the resurgence and advancement of civilizations, initially in ancient Egypt, known then as Kemet and subsequently across the globe over 36,000 years ago, following a catastrophic flood. The Egyptian Book of the Dead, revered as the inaugural esoteric guide to immortality, contains tales of extraterrestrial beings residing among the stars, immortal entities that offered pharaohs the opportunity for induction into the divine realm. This concept introduces the notion of the underworld in Egyptian mythology, portraying it as a domain of both spiritual and tangible knowledge that granted its possessors the ability to access the heavens. Within the ancient Sumerian tablets from Mesopotamia, the deity Ningishzida, who would later be recognized as Thoth, was depicted as an Anunnaki alien god of the oldest civilization. The deities mentioned across various mythologies, despite bearing different names, were not divine beings, but sophisticated extraterrestrials from a planet called Nibiru. Ningish Zida, an Earth-born extraterrestrial, hailed from the core and capital of the mythical Atlantis, where recent underwater explorations near Spain have unveiled colossal megaliths. His father, Enki, also known as the Dweller or Thotmi, was a Nibiruan prince with extensive dominion over humans, the Anunnaki and Atlantis, and genetically modified and engineered of Homo sapiens sapiens alongside his sister Ninhursag in the Garden of Eden. As a child of the Anunnaki, Thoth or Ningishzida 
was educated in the ancient and cosmic mysteries by Enki. These secrets of the cosmos, revered and potent among the Anunnaki's elite royal lineage, involved the use of sophisticated technology and ether consciousness to achieve higher dimensional transcendence, prolong life for millennia, and manipulate fate. Nonetheless, Thoth aspired not to wield this knowledge for power or deity impersonation, but to serve as a mentor to humanity. He assumed the roles of a king and priest in Atlantis, contributing to the prosperity of both humanity and the children of the sun. Over the ages, Thoth adopted numerous identities such as Tehuti, Quetzalcoatl, Hermes, leveraging the halls of Amenti, also referred to as rejuvenation chambers, to inhabit human avatars for extended periods while his original form was revitalized. In the aftermath of the Great Flood, his father Enki summoned him to revitalize civilizations. Thoth and his team of Atlantean Anunnaki journeyed to ancient Kemet, derived from chemistry, highlighting Thoth's expertise in chemistry over all elements. At that era, Kemet, known as the land of the black-headed people, was designated for reconstruction post-flood by Thoth, who then ruled Kemet for 16,000 years, and when he left the Egyptians, made him a deity, or god, for letting them inherit the pyramids. Thoth articulates later in the tablets, I sent from me the sons of Atlantis, sent them in many directions, that from the womb of time wisdom might rise again in her children. Long time dwelt I in the land of Kem, doing great works by the wisdom within me. Essentially, Thoth indicated that he dispatched his Anunnaki companions to every continent to initiate and govern new civilizations, employing their architectural prowess in pyramids and scientific knowledge. Thoth's Atlantean team comprised of multiracial Anunnaki from various planets. They accompanied Earthlings from ancient Egypt aboard spaceships, genetically modifying these individuals to mirror their own appearance on the new continent they ruled. This intervention is attributed to the genesis of the diverse races and cultural distinctions present in the world today. Another fascinating detail in the Emerald Tablets is Thoth's disclosure of his spaceship's location, buried deep within Earth's core beneath the Pyramids of Giza, a site still subject to mining and excavation efforts. Archaeologists and Egyptologists have unearthed secret chambers deep within Giza's labyrinthine subterranean networks, crafted from granite blocks and limestone. This discovery suggests that the pyramids, often hailed as the world's most magnificent architectural feats, might have served as a power source, implying the ancient Egyptians' utilization of electricity. The logistical challenge of constructing and navigating these underground chambers without natural light or adequate oxygen supply further supports this theory. Thoth's own words from the Emerald Tablet state, Builded I the Great Pyramid, patterned after the Pyramid of Earth Force, burning eternally so that it too might remain through the ages. In it, I builded my knowledge of magic science. This assertion lends credence to the notion that the Great Pyramid encases Thoth's advanced technological and mathematical blueprints, enabling wireless power and serving multiple functions akin to a stone computer designed to withstand the ages. Following familial conflicts with his jealous powerful brother Amun-Ra, also known as Marduk, Thoth ventured to Mesoamerica, where he instigated the rise of the Mayan and Aztec civilizations incarnating in various human avatars. The Book of the Dead proclaims Thoth as not only the mastermind and constructor of the Great Pyramid, but also as the architect behind Teotihuacan and the Pyramids of the Sun and Moon in present-day Mexico. These declarations were etched into stone at the onset of civilization on Earth, with similar accounts found in pyramid texts dating back to around 2450 BC. Within the apocryphal texts, which were excluded from the canonical Bible, it is documented that Yeshua, or Jesus, was an adept of the Egyptian mysteries in Coptic Cairo, Egypt, when he was 12, having been instructed in the concepts of reincarnation and meditation. These writings, including the Gospel of Jesus' wife, provide indications that the nativity of Yeshua, or Jesus, was intertwined with solar and planetary alignments, hinting at a birthright of Anunnaki nobility, a tradition stemming from extraterrestrial customs of the Atlanteans. 
Billy Carson, in his book, Compendium of the Emerald Tablets, asserts that there are copious indisputable proofs suggesting that Jesus, or Yeshua, was the incarnation of Thoth. Here are several instances that illustrate the parallels between Jesus and Thoth. Thoth proclaims, I, Thoth, the Atlantean, master of mysteries, keeper of records, mighty king, magician, living from generation to generation, being about to pass into the halls of Amenti. These records of the profound wisdom of ancient Atlantis laid down for the enlightenment of future generations in the grand city of Kior on the island of Undal, in a bygone era, I embarked on this incarnation. This declaration highlights Thoth's discourse on reincarnation and renewal, echoing the sentiments found in 2 Corinthians 5, 2, 7, which states, We grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For when we are clothed in heavenly bodies, we will not be spirits without bodies. Thoth elaborates, Unlike the diminutive men of the current era, the formidable beings of Atlantis did not merely live and perish. Instead, from epoch to epoch, they rejuvenated their existence in the halls of Amenti, where the eternal river of life perpetually flows. This notion resonates with Jesus, or Yeshua's words in the New Testament, John 7.38, Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Given that the emerald tablets are believed to predate the Bible by approximately 36,000 years, it is a reasonable assumption to consider that Jesus or Yeshua is either echoing the words of Thoth he learned, or Jesus is an incarnation of Thoth. He is essentially quoting himself in a manner understandable to his followers. The Bible's Genesis 2.10 14, which talks about the river of life splitting into four branches, can be likened to the description in Stedman's medical dictionary regarding the river of cerebrospinal fluid in the brain's four ventricles. This is metaphorically referred to as the oil that emanates from the pineal gland, elevating individuals to Christ consciousness. Moreover, this analogy allows for the interpretation that the rivers of life in the halls of Amenti symbolize the mythical and legendary fountain of youth. Additionally, Thoth proclaims, In a time yet unborn will I rise again, mighty and potent, demanding an account from those I leave behind. This assertion mirrors the sentiment in Mark 9.31, where Jesus or Yeshua informs his disciples of his resurrection. Jesus further assures his disciples in John 14, 20, I go away and come again unto you. Tell no one the Son of Man be risen again. This statement too alludes to the concept of reincarnation and the ability to incarnate at will, paralleling Thoth's teachings. Thoth also declares, while I speak in the halls of Amenti, my soul roaming free will incarnate, dwell among men in this form or another. Emissary on earth am I of the dweller, executing his commands so many may be uplifted. Now return I to the halls of Amenti, bequeathing some of my wisdom behind. This illustrates the concept of a spiritual mission and the dissemination of knowledge, further aligning the philosophies and missions attributed to both Thoth and Jesus. In subsequent eras, the essence of Thoth transitioned into human vessels as delineated in the texts, where he articulates within the regenerative confines known as the Halls of Amenti, adopting the guise of humanity yet remaining distinct from mankind. Is it possible that Thoth used this gift of incarnation to be born a prophesied human baby and see what is like to actually be born human, wiping away all his knowledge and memories until he was older and went back to the pyramids to his spaceship or rejuvenation chambers to regain his memory data? Is this why, when he returns to his home at the age of 30, he was fully potent in his power and who he was, ready to lead his people and disciples against the oppressive Roman state and stop the money-hungry Jew priests? The concept of rejuvenation chambers has, in contemporary times, edged closer to reality through initiatives like the 2045 Avatar Project, this non-profit organization is at the forefront of pioneering technology, aimed at facilitating the transference of an individual's personality and consciousness into an alternative, non-biological host, thereby extending human life towards immortality. This venture is detailed on 2045. 
Comma, considering the hypothetical scenario where ancient extraterrestrials possess technology far surpassing our current advancements, the fruition of the 2045 project could validate historical accounts and suggest a cyclical nature of human achievements and errors mirroring those attributed to the Anunnaki. This expansive narrative, spanning the tale of Atlantis, Thoth, and the continuous influence of ancient wisdom, beckons us to reflect on the enigmas of our existence, the quest for enlightenment, and the repetitive patterns of history, including concealed histories and the survival of primordial knowledge through human civilization. For those intrigued by this subject matter, it is recommended to delve into Compendium of the Emerald Tablets by Billy Carson and the Emerald Tablets by Doriel, a mason who reportedly absconded with the tablets in the 1920s and fortuitously was permitted to publish excerpts from the Emerald Tablets. What are your thoughts on the proposition that Jesus or Yeshua was Thoth, the Atlantean priest king? Do you believe society is prepared to confront the truths within the Emerald Tablets? And, in the context of the 2045 project's ambition to achieve human immortality, is humanity on the cusp of replicating a mistake or achieving a milestone reminiscent of the Anunnaki's legacy? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And if you like this episode, please like this video and subscribe for more cosmic mysteries and legends. May the eternal light forever guide your path. See you on the next episode.